back, everybody, to another episode of the Super Mega Cast. This is episode 177, yes, and yes. we're your hosts, uh, Matt Watson and Ryan McGee. That's right. I, I'd like to give. Let's not confuse people from the start. My name is Ryan McGee. In case this is your first podcast, this I'm, is I'm Matt Watson. Well, let's give me. Uh, let's say a sentence. Uh, you say the same sentence afterwards. Okay. Uh, I went to the store and bought some Tims. I went to the store and bought some Tims. See, my voice is nasally and a little higher pitched than Ryan's. So. I, see, I hear my voice is more like than your voice. voice dude. That's, That's what, what, I mean, every time you impersonate me, it's like because I got yeah. that. I got that nasally. It, it's actually it might not be nasally for long. I'm getting my septum undeviated because yeah. I have such a. You know, I could give you a big old knuckle sandwich and fix that in like two seconds. I would let you do that, honestly, if I knew for a fact. Would you really let me let me do that? Yes, I would. I would want to be under though. Like asleep, like with something, or get black. I feel like I'm drunk. punching a dead body. That doesn't feel nice. Uh, okay, yeah, I guess that, I'll just get. The there has to be some sort of react. Oh, just, okay, never mind. It's I fine. went to the ENT uh, a while back, and he was like, "I don't even know how you breathe out of your nose because your septum is so absolutely deviated. Your nose is just so fucking it's big, so big and ugly." <laughs> Did you have a grandfather that had a nasty ass nose like this? Jesus, okay, Phineas. Um, <laughs> I, I look. Uh, if you like, look up my nostrils, which you don't do often, but no, you'll actually see that one of them up here, like the hole itself, is just a slit. Got any boogers up there? Uh, I mean, you can check if you want. Let me, I'm gonna come over there and check your nose. So no, but I want you to compare. So one of them is a slit. So look, look at, so look at the, the actual hole yeah. inside my nose, okay, not look, not my nostril, yeah, but yeah, in yeah. there. Like compare the size difference. Okay, hold on. Oh yeah, this one's like three times the size. Yeah. Of the other one. And I think that's why my voice is so nasally because I it, it's like oh it's like a Squidward thing. So you're so so if you're going to get the surgery, you're just going to sound different. I might. I don't know. I might. I'm, I might be. I'm, what if I just had the most beautiful voice? Yeah, I might just sound like this. Uh, hey, Ryan, how's it going? Hey, Ryan. Fuck. I'm curious if it will. If actually people in the comments who have had a septum surgery, uh, well, have they said their experiences with it? No, I'm I'm curious. Uh, when you guys listen to this, let me know if your voice sounded different, um, or like less nasally or something. Because you know that my no my voice is nasally. Like, see, like when I cover up. If I cover up one nostril, well, anyone who covers up their nostrils, well, I'm just is covering up one nasally. right now, and it sounds like that. But if I cover, well, up the I can cover one. Okay, I'm trying for that one. Yeah, I just sound kind of. I, I guess I just do. I sound normal with my nostrils covered. No, I'm, I'm, you sound nasally. And then I, if I really open up my nostrils, like if I, yeah. if I if I really pull them open, does my voice sound any different right now? <laughs> you sound like because you're talking with your upper lip over your teeth or whatever. So you you sound kind of like this right now. My you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hey, dude, what's up? <laughs> yeah, I got I got the surgery. I just come back with like a Looking Chinese like a fucking accent. Who from Whoville, dude? Well, I come out of surgery with a thick Chinese accent. That happens to some people. That's bullshit. Is it bullshit? I think it is. I think the people they're like, oh, I woke up. Like the woman that like somebody, it's like if I go into surgery one day and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I just woke up like this. Man. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. It's like it's like no. I think I think the people that do that, I think they're getting attention or they're what if it's, it, it could be Ill. a serious uh, medical condition. I don't think there's any known medical condition where you exactly wake up with it could a be super rare. You wake up with a completely different accent. Of course, like brains are crazy oh, things. Ron, I woke up with an accent. Oops. That, that's terrible, Matt. I'm here to support you. Thank you. Thank you. What happened there? Your accent slipped. Are you faking? No. Are you trying to? <laughs> I'm bad at accents. You know, the last podcast we did impressions. Let's do accents this time because we haven't done accents before, have we? No. Okay. Give, me, give do... me your best British. We'll start easy. Like what kind of British? Just uh... hello, everybody. My name's Ryan McGee, and um, I'm going to be discussing uh, some politics. And um, that sounds Australian. I'm going to be talking about politics and a bunch of boring things. But uh, my buddy Matt Watson over here, he uh, is a piece of shit. And I hope that he does a better impression than I am doing now. I can't do a good. I'm really bad at it. No, I'm going to give you a different accent. Ready for this one? Can I try British? Yeah, you can try. Oh, I got it. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, You're trying to Cockney accent, mate. I, no, I, that, that was Australian. Can you you threw in the mate. It's Cockney. <laughs> oh, it's my, it's my British accent. Oh, it's not very good. It's your British accent it's, right there. It's not very good. Okay, so that British accent. So there's a lot of different. There's I a guess, lot of different can, ones. Like you can talk as a British person. Liverpool. Li Liverpool. 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 I can't do okay, British. Give me one. Okay. Um, French. Ooh. 
uh, I'll do the sense we did earlier. I am going to the store to buy some teams. <laughs> no, I just, that was horrible. <laughs> I am going to the store to buy some teams. Let me try some more. I'm going to the store to buy some teams. <laughs> okay. A little bit better? A little bit better. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh-huh. The teams. We are we are going to the mall beach. <laughs> that was good. Uh, that that's you got you got the like the <laughs> we are going to the mall. The mall? <laughs> the mall? <laughs> I can't do a French we accent are, at all. We are going to the mall. <laughs> The dust mall. <laughs> Give me a German one. That's very nice. <laughs> German Borat. What the fuck is that? Uh, we're, we're going. I am here to inspect your house, Monsieur. <laughs> monsieur. You, monsieur. Why do you, you keep putting other culture things in there? Like you said, mate for the British one. You said Monsieur for the German one. Because it's fun. Um. Oh, yes, I am going to inspect your house. Oh, right? yeah. I just do Don's Isn't that voice. Dutch? Oh, hello, my name is Don. Oh, fuck. I do the art for Super Mega. I love doing the art for Super Mega because, um, uh, dab, 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 dab. Dabbing um, his forehead? <laughs> yeah, not not dabbing. He's not, not doing the... No, he's not doing He's good the, at dabbing, though. Yeah, he is good at that. I don't know how he does it so well. I mean, I, yeah, it's like... It's a, so fluid. It's almost like he's a Fortnite character. It's like an ocean wave. It is. Um, all right. So I what? give you German. Okay, uh, Jamaican. Hey man, Jamaica man, you're making me crazy. No, that's so hard. Hey, Cinnamon is the winner, man. Cinnamon is the winner, man. See? Dun, 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 dun. Where are you going up there? Dude, dun, 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 ocean floor. What if they put the uh, Apple Jacks characters the in sea. Fortnite? What? The Apple Jacks characters in Fortnite as skins. Just that saying. would be cool. Yeah. I hear, so, I hear Jackson I, playing Jackson's Fortnite. playing Fortnite in the other room. I can hear it through the wall. I hear the explosions. We told him to interrupt us if he gets a battle royale. Yeah, so. but, you know, knowing Jackson, he yeah. probably... Give me your best... You were doing it a little bit earlier. Australian. Oh, am I? Oh, wait. Listen, bro. Hi, I'm just bro. doing an Australian accent, bro. Hi, bro. Hey, listen, bro. Um, I'm going to drink some choggers, mate. No, I, I said do Australian, not, not man-child. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I might, yeah. Uh, Gonna go down to the the dollar store the the dollar store the dollar store <laughs> to the bottle out get a couple bevies get a couple bevies mate New Zealand is is slightly like Australian water bottle apparently if you say that they water get bottle off, but it's like would you like a water bottle New New, New Zealand my favorite word the to New say Zealand is, accent is water bottle in water New bottle? Zealand slash Aust- water bottle water bottle water bottle I think New Zealand is more water like ne- ne- New Zealand New Zealand and Australians like New Zealand. I don't fucking know. New dude. Zealand. New, New Zealand. New Zealand. Well, what about old Zealand? <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, that's uh, New Zealand's the safest place uh, to be in the world if there's ever like an atomic holocaust. Okay. Fun fact, or so they tell me. Who tells you these things? I don't actually remember who told me that. All right. Probably some stupid New Zealander. Hearsay. Some dumb Kiwi. Throw it out. It's hearsay. It's hearsay. Yeah. I'm gonna fucking. There's gonna be an atomic holocaust. I'm gonna get my the first flight to New Zealand and find out that it's like literally the worst place I could have gone. So they store all the world's nukes. You can go there for some snowboarding. I would love to go to New Zealand. I remember the Rocket Power movie. They went to New Zealand to compete in the uh, some big competition. It didn't come out in theaters. It was like a Direct TV to, movie. Yeah. Oh, a TV movie. Yeah. Or maybe it was just a big special. All I know is that the the Rocket Power. People went to New Zealand to compete to something. That's badass. Yeah. It's gnarly. They went to Kiwi land. Okay. Uh, that's what you call New Zealanders, Kiwis. Got it. It sounds like an insult, doesn't it? Like, you fucking Kiwi. I know. Kiwis are kind of cute. You know, when you call a French person a frog, it's obviously an insult. Because the frogs are not Hey, cute. Kiwi. Maybe maybe it sounds like you're calling them like, hey, pussy. Hey, yeah, pussy boy. Ki- Kiwi is also a you know? fruit. You know? So you could be calling them a fruit by saying that. You can't say pussy, right? I don't know. Pussy? Is pussy one of those things? That, that you can't say? Yeah. Uh, well, I, like, I wasn't using it le- legitimately, I guess. Ma'am, can I see your... Pussy? V- v- vaginal crease. <laughs> the, 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 do- the doctor comes in. Uh, now let's get a look at that pussy, ma'am. You know that's happening. Ooh, before. spread those lips. Whoa! <laughs> Woo! A lot of smeg in there. Talk about spreading the Red Sea. Oh, a lot of blood. A lot of, uh... <laughs> Oh, dude, never mind. I can't tell that story. That time you had the period at your gynecologist? I just said I can't tell that Sorry. story. Sorry. Yeah, right. I remember my cousin. So I have a cousin that lives in Costa Rica. And and 
I mean, when we were like 11, he was trying to tell me that he saw a man in the jungle in Costa Rica having his period. And I was like, no, you didn't. He's like, yeah, no, really. I saw a man in the jungle having his period. I saw him. And I was like, what does that mean? He saw a man in the jungle man having his blood. Period. He's like, he's having his period. I'm like, that's not how it works. Dude. Pissing blood? Yikes. I know. Right? I, I haven't pissed blood yet. And I hope I've to, never not, blood. to not piss blood in, in a long time. What causes you to piss blood? A urinary tract infection? Yep. Uh, kidney stones? Kidney stones? Um, For cancer of the. Does prostate cancer make you pee blood? I don't think so. Maybe. That's poo poo. Chemotherapy makes you pee blood, I think. Or at least in Breaking Bad, they did. Cross that one off the bingo board. We talked about Breaking Bad. Um, Talking to my wife makes me pee blood. Yeah, tell me about it. Me too, man. She well, she makes me pee cum. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, dude, I just I just pissed some cum. That girl was so hot, I just pissed cum everywhere. I think it was recently. <laughs> I, I I I sorry. <laughs> Awkward silence after that. <laughs> I think it was recently where I walked into a room of you watching a vi like videos of of men pissing into women's mouths. Like, <laughs> these are things that you I always have to give context I on. I love just putting you on the spot. Well, the, you didn't walk in. You were in the room when I looked it up. Well, I, I did up, walk out. But then you came back in. And, <laughs> well, okay, we were looking up video, like weird piss videos. And um, I can't, I can't, because I, I was like, I was like, ah, oh, dude, look at this. Because it was like these guys uh, just, just peeing in these two girls' mouths. Uh, two, two women's mouths, I should clarify. They were... They were very like into it in the in the video. Oh, they were like, oh. they were they were like gargling it and spitting it everywhere and splashing on each other. Sorry, like, I just had to like retreat back from the mic because I started gagging. Pee is the least gross of the body fluids, though. Water. That's not. It doesn't count. Okay, well, you're spit, made up of seventy percent spit, water. Spit's the least gross body fluid, then. Okay, but I'd say pee is up there with not the grossest body fluid. Like obviously, I can't grossest. tell if I'd rather have someone pee in my mouth or spit in my mouth. If someone spits in my mouth, it's like this loogie, gross, okay, slimy texture. Blood, if someone just does a little spritz in my mouth, a I, spritz of pee -pee? I feel like I could just swallow that. Like, if it was the same amount of pee as spit, I feel like I could more easily swallow pee. Yeah, because spit has a texture where pee's just... Yeah. Just like, ugh. Just get, get it out. Ooh, get, salty. Ooh. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We really... The shit we talk about on this podcast, it, it's, it's, it's almost, like, impressive how quickly it can devolve from, like, doing accents to talking about, like, pissing in someone's mouth. In our mouths, drinking someone's pee over drink or over drinking spit. Which was I have drank pee before. Your own. I did. I took a sip of my own pee. Uh, I don't know if I've told that story. I don't know if I need to tell that story. I don't. I don't want to know because there's. You know this story. How about this? You can't tell the story if you're not willing to tell the full story. Okay, it's just it's pretty gross. <clears throat> yeah, but like the thing is, I think you would have okay. to get permission. From, from, certain from the people. other parties involved, and it, no, this makes it sound like I was doing like water, like water sports, like with some, like I was doing a sexual thing. I'm like, oh, I can't talk about that because you know. Um, all right, I'll tell the story. Okay, Brent pissed in my mouth and I swallowed it, and I pissed in his, and he swallowed it, and then I pissed in my own mouth and I swallowed it. And you said that that couldn't, that you wouldn't be able to hold the piss in your mouth, or else he would give you five hundred dollars. Yeah. And guess who won five hundred dollars? Guess who walked away with five hundred dollars? Brent has a weird thing about pissing in people's mouths. It's like it's. You like, want that mic about a fist away from? Oh, your, sorry, man. Fist I'm, away from your I'm mouth. A little bit. I'm a little bit too far. I pulled from the my Joe mic. Rogan there. Hey, you're, you're a little closer to the mic. It's always like a fist away from your mouth. A fist away. Yeah. Is that what you learned? Even like a fist away. Because Joe Rogan uses the same microphone. Like, you just want that sucker right on you. How, how about Joe Bogan? And he's an Australian Bogan. Have okay. I made that joke before? <clears throat> I feel like it's so easy. I, I feel like I feel like it has been said. Oh yeah, Jamie, we, we pull have, that up. We have said thousands of things, so. I'm sure at one point, Joe Bogan Probably. might have been on there. How about Joe Rogaine and he grows his hair out? What would Joe Rogan look I don't. I think he would look weird with hair. It's unnatural. Yeah. I, like Dr. Phil with hair? Think about that. No, he has some hair, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. like oh, his... by the way, we found out something because I saw it like on, on Twitter. It was like a Twitter moment or it was something, something. Maybe it was like a Reddit news. Whatever. Um, remember how we were talking about like like Puerto Rico recently? Yeah, I think on the last episode. And like, like, I don't know if it was just found out recently if, or how long this broke, but the news has been like more outwardly spread recently. Have how they were actually hide like Puerto Rico, like the uppers in Puerto Rico were uh, hiding the aid. Yeah, it was, like they found it like a warehouse, aid. just like unused, like for months. Just and the all reason they weren't and... given more aid was because of corruption in Puerto Rico, and so it was proven correct. That's so fucked up. Yeah, those people literally dying with no electricity, no clean water. 
That's fucked, man. So, Puerto Rico really <clears throat> got so fucked. So the government was going to like hold on to the aid to force to get like more funding from our government. And then when we didn't give them more funding, they wouldn't be able to explain like, oh, I don't know where we got this aid from. Well, uh, what's so <clears> fucked <throat> up real quick is just like for this whole sh charade where, you know, that's like politicians playing money games, but like it affects people like just dying in the streets like the aid they, they have no say in this whole corruption thing or the getting the aid or holding it it's just like oh the uppers uh are, are yeah. doing a pissing match and now we don't get but politicians water. don't care about the actual people they care about the statistics because about you, because money. politicians can't fathomably actually care about everyone that they are in charge of so they just have to care about the statistical outcome of like positive to negative and most of the time, this is they they want the statistics and the math to fall in their favor. So it usually just becomes more about money than creating a a better economy and stuff. You imagine if Mr. Krabs was president, man, we'd be that'd be a real <laughs> shit show. I don't know. He's he he wouldn't. He's a penny pincher. He wouldn't spend too much. Wouldn't our, be that big of a budget. Our, our, yeah, you know, we we would balance the budget real fast. I'm telling you, like it would it would be some some real shit. We should. I would like to get SpongeBob characters as like a political, like cabinet of the go, like a third. You know, there's. There's Democrat, Republican. And then SpongeBob. And then SpongeBob. And then Bikini Bottom uh, representatives. Yeah. Get, get the guy that yells, My leg. He, go, he can go Say down to the, the guy on the who voices floor. Plankton is the famous My leg guy. Oh, okay. Mr. Uh, That's why he sounds very similar. My leg. My leg. That's so good. I fucking love uh, SpongeBob. I, um, how, do you, how do you feel about the new SpongeBob movie? Well, one, they're using it obviously to help tie in Camp uh, Coral. Camp Coral. The spin-off, the prequel to SpongeBob, is that yeah. what it is? And the style of the movie, um while I think it's always nice to go in different stylistic directions, I I feel like it SpongeBob loses a lot of that SpongeBob feel. Yeah, it's not really the same anymore. Yeah, it's more choppy and not as like cuz you know, there's like I don't know. It's not real claymation. It's like CGI stop yeah, motion, right? It's like fake. It's like it's like isn't the same shit that like the Charlie Brown people did. Which looks not bad, but, no, but it, I, wanna... it, it, I want like like with it when it's claymation, I, it's just like you have so much more respect for it. Like uh like 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 a like a like claymation. The missing link. They do fucking incredible. Which is up claymation. for best picture? Really? Hallelujah. I never saw it. It's good. Oh, we haven't even started talking about this yet. We're back from Vegas. Yes. Um, which at the last podcast we said we were back from Vegas, but at the time of recording we hadn't actually gone yet. Yes. But now we're back from Vegas, baby. And we It was super fun. Yeah. Ate a lot of good food. Well, you you missed out on the on the, the steaks, which you said was your favorite part. Yes. One of it, my was it was late at night. I was so tired. And we get to the steak place. I'm like, I'm gonna Uber back to the to the hotel. I'm so tired. And then apparently you guys had the best steaks ever. Yeah. And it was it wasn't that much because the steaks are half off after um midnight. So they're gonna give you half a steak? <laughs> Hey, right, right, right. Uh, that was good. Thanks, man. I'm trying. No, it was just a very cheap steak. Oh, yeah. How cheap was it? Uh, well, I I don't remember the menu off the top of my head, unfortunately. I want exact prices. I'm I can't give that to you right now. No round. I'll, I'll, have, I'll have to look it up. I'll have to look it up. It looked it looked good. But the, like I will say that the uh, the bill for four people was very low. For everyone ordering steaks and sides and drinks and stuff. I wish I had come. I was just so... Because the thing was, you know, I'd had some drinks and then I fell asleep in the Uber on the was way Was that there. the same day you were just kind of like, my feet. Yes. My I was, feet. I, at the end of that night, I was just ready to pass Because out. a lot of the walking we did was like, I think it's this way. And like, we didn't figure out, like, no one looked it up to make sure and double check that we could actually get through a casino into another one. Yeah, there was a lot of backtracking when there didn't need to be. And my feet were killing me because I got big old bunions. Another yep. surgery I need to have. That I've been holding off because they said it's a it's like a long recovery process and very painful recovery process, and I can't do both feet at the same time. Um, actually, you know what? I can check how many miles we walked that day. Okay, I'm gonna go on my health app, and I will tell you that day how many miles we I walked. I forgot to wear my Apple Watch today. It's oh, you bitch! Anything. And it's weird. Sunday, it didn't record my shit into the activity app, even though it was recording on the watch itself. What's up with that? What's up with that? What's up with that? Walking. Okay, here Phoenix? we go. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, he's here. Uh, we were gonna have him on the podcast, but we decided not to. Okay, what, what day did we get to Vegas? Tuesday? Yes. yes. Okay, we walked, I walked 8.1 miles that day. So, that's, that's a pretty considerable amount of walking. 
you know? I mean, the next day was 5.8. I and mean, the next day was 6.6. So that's, that's a good, I can always tell when I am, uh, out of town by my steps because they go up so much. Like, okay, here we go. March, 2019, when we went to Japan, look at this. I'm how, looking. How do I, hold on, I'm trying to figure out how to pull this shit up. Okay. March, 2019. 9.4 miles one day, 7.5 the other day, 8.6, 8.2. Yeah, walked a lot in Japan. It pisses me off. It says I only did that. I worked out. Hey, I 69, did my activity. 69 calories no, burned? No, no, because that's not true. No, that's funny, though. That's the funny I number. don't care that's if it's funny. Numbers. It's stupid. Hey, but guess Trying what? to get healthy and technology is failing me. But guess what? Guess what? Even if it didn't count it there, counted it here. It did count in here. It did. Body. It's it did count boobs. in my body. So that's that data is not lost. That data is there. Yeah. So you've been you've been exercising in the mornings now. Uh, usually like midday. So you've been you got you got a a machine. Yeah, having a an elliptical trainer machine. Nice. It's very nice. It has nice. Uh, workouts already on it, so I can just be like this workout, and then it's like okay, and then it adjusts the resistance as the workout goes that on. Shit's so hard. I I remember doing. You feel the burn, and then yeah, you, you get off of it, and you're. Head's all cloud, and you're like, whoa, where am I? Then it feels like you're walking on clouds because your legs are Your just legs like, are so light. Yep. Yeah. And then you, you're all shaky. You get the jelly legs. Exactly. I remember exercising when I would do that on treadmills and shit. I, I have really bad um, endurance. I just, like, don't have good endurance. You can improve it. Yeah. I, 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 it's super easy to improve, apparently. But when I when I start doing that, I just, I'm out of breath so fucking fast. Because at Universal, we went up those steps. Well, you got to break through that. Yeah. That's what my that, dad. That's what happens. It, it, like, it takes me sometimes, like, 15 minutes of just oh, constantly so. working out and then like it'll it'll be that moment where it's like okay now i can just get go the runner's and, high, yeah. yeah it's like when you're when you're w when your heart rate goes from like 170 in between like 170 to like 180 something usually you're like oh my god it's hurting you're miserable but once you pass that runner's high like even if your heart rate's like 180 um like that doesn't feel as bad as when you first started cuz my experience in running um the times i've done it like long runs mm -hmm. it sucks at first but then you hit a point where it's like just numb and you can just keep going you're just like i'm just, just gonna like, oh, just gonna keep going yep yeah you gotta break that barrier and that's that's the shittiest part i uh i, I used to run in charleston growing up there was a every year not was there is every year a thing called the bridge run and i think it's in april every year the bridge run yeah, oh you know okay, charleston's big, famous yeah. for the big bridge so every year people will start in mount pleasant well and in then, irma we have the okra strut well, you know what? You don't have a big ass bridge. <laughs> well, we have the. Do you have uh, the fourth biggest suspension bridge in North America? Yes, we do. Do you have the biggest celebration of okra in the United States? Damn it! No, we don't. Yeah, well, uh, okra bouncy houses, okra mascots. I do love okra. I would like to go to that one year. Do you like okra? Never tried it. You've never tried okra, but I've been to the okra strut. Dad, you fake. Thing. <laughs> that's, that's not right, dude. It's not right. Okra is amazing. It's 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 a weird texture, though, I do say. And if you're a texture guy and texture is what turns you off, don't imagine you like okra. It's you like bite asparagus. It. No, not at all. You bite it and outside's a little bit fuzzy. You bite through it and it's the green part of the okra itself is a little stringy. And then the inside is just clear goo, like very slimy, like like almost That's feels disgusting. like lube and then there's little seeds that feel like fish eggs so it's for texture people it's not good i love okra though okra is delicious. so it's not like an asparagus i like asparagus have you ever do you know you know what like the inside of okra looks like no oh, okay let me show you okra is is probably i could, I could look it up on my end nope nope I'm, I'm beating you to it uh look at the okra is probably one of my favorite vegetables i think fried okra is one of like the best southern dishes in existence i think like Anytime I go to a restaurant and fried okra is an option, I will I will scoop that up. I will throw those little suckers right in my mouth. I can't get enough of fried okra because it when it's fried, it doesn't have like the sliminess or anything. It's just like a nice. Did, did you send me the picture? Oh, sorry. I thought you were pulling it up. I, I looked at it myself. No, you told me it. you weren't. Well, yeah, but then I thought, but up. you were still looking at your phone. Yeah, I that's got... okra. That's like that's what okra looks like on the inside, and it's full of slime. Interesting. Um, slime pickled okra is really good. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll search okra slime real quick. So you can see like a nice picture of the slime. It's definitely, why is my okra slimy? The same clear goop that flows through its leaves known as mucilage. So it's mucus. Is also found in okra pods made of sugar residues called exopolysaccharides and proteins called glycoproteins. 
So, okay, so it, it's just protein, I guess. Did you know, fun fact, the slime on the outside of sharks that makes them slippery is the same stuff that uh, makes a woman's no-no place uh, wet? It's blood plasma? Yeah. Okay. Do you know that? Wait, I, I didn't know I, it's this, that, that sharks used blood plasma. I hope to... I don't have that wrong. Wait, is, is it really blood plasma? The I think so. Whoa. Yo, I'm about to be donating some plasma tonight. I mean, I, I can saying. double check that. Dude, can you go into a plasma donation center and just come out with like a cup of semen and be like, here it is. And like, sir, what are you, what are you doing? Like, well, I got my donation. Dude, the best fucking moment in all of Check It Out with Steve Brule is when he goes to the fertility clinic and they give him a cup to get his sample. And he goes into the room and comes back out with like a huge log of shit in the cup that he's supposed to come in. And they're like, no, 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 no. That's, that's not right. And the woman's just so confused. I mean, they hook him up to the machine to extract the sample. And he's, he's making gravy. It's a fucking classic show. God, what I'm having to type into Google. What are you typing into Google? Let's put an end to this myth. Let's figure it out. You know what I'm saying? It just says it secretes mucus, but what is the mucus? What is the genetic makeup of that mucus? Of from the from the pussy? From the from the from the shark or from the f- from the vagina? From the f- what is Skeen's glands, which is which sit near the urethra and are sometimes called the female prostate, oh! also contribute to the wetness you feel when you're aroused. Uh, they secrete mucus that lubricates the area around your vaginal opening. But what is that? What what's the material? What's what, the mucus what, called? What is vagina wet? I'm gonna look up what is vagina <laughs> mucus called. PlannedParenthood.com has a section called "What Happens When a Girl Gets Wet." Why people also ask why am I always wet down there and smelly? What color is a female's wetness? Is there a name for that? Like, is there a name for the, the substance itself? I don't know. Uh, whoa. Psy- psychology today. In short term, men like kisses to be wet, while <coughs> women do not. Interesting. The discharge from your mucus plug is very thick, jelly-like, and maybe tinged with blood. Some women describe the mucus I plug think as looking like thing. thick egg whites. Do you know what a mucus plug or is? Or the mucus from a runny nose. I'm pretty sure that's when you give birth. Interesting. The, the oh, mucus plug, just those, that combination of words is not. Mucus plug. Ugh. Clear and milky white. However, any changes in its quantity or consistency is just an issue. A woman Does anyone listen pregnant, to this podcast with their parents? <laughs> why is there clear, slimy stuff when I wipe? As far as the sticky stuff coming from your vagina goes, <laughs> it's normal to have a vaginal discharge. It's actually Elmer's glue. Sticky, thin, or thick. However, it should not have an unpleasant odor. Normal vaginal fluid is the body's way of keeping the vagina moist and clean. Hold, hold on. I'm, I'm just going down Google's suggested related questions. Me too. That's what I'm doing. What happens after kissing a guy? Uh, your pupils dilate. So after kissing a guy. Uh, can lip kiss cause pregnancy? No, you cannot get pregnant from just kissing someone. Pregnancy can only occur if sperm is ejaculated in or near the vagina. Uh, what, why is my discharge stretchy? It is white or transparent, stretchy. thick and sticky, or slippery and stretchy. Unusual types of vaginal discharge can indicate bacterial <laughs> vaginosis, discharge that has a fishy odor, a Yo. yeast infection, discharge is clumpy like cottage cheese. We're, we're gynecologists in this episode. <laughs> I'm so learning so much. I, I'm, going, I'm going down right now, and, and these are these are the related questions. Can a girl get pregnant if a boy touches her breast with mouth? <laughs> Uh, what? what happens if sperm touches your hand? Can I get pregnant just by rubbing? Can sperm go through your clothes and get you pregnant? Uh, can I get pregnant if he puts puts it back in? What? What should be eaten to avoid pregnancy? There's not really. What does yellow discharge look like? All right, that's, I think that's that's good for the segment of ten minutes if of your us reading out is vaginal green or yellow questions on and Google. has a foul smell. Oh, I, I don't. This is an indication that you may have an infection. Yeah, have you ever listened to Super Mega Cast? Yeah, <laughs> so you're looking for a good podcast to listen to? S- some 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 grown women out there might have might have just been like, oh shit, you guys helped me catch the yeast infection. That's what we're here for, guys. That's because this Mega's poor woman for. at the age of forty had never had one before or heard of it. <sighs> Yeast is a natural byproduct of that the body produces. I know, I know. We can make bread. 
Tech, can we? Women can make bread? No. Yo, I'll I mean, I'll 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 I mean, you yogurt. You, they made yogurt with their yeast, right? Yo, let me tell you something, Ryan. What's up? I don't know if women can make bread, but I can make bread. With what? You know, what I'm uh, money, I can money, 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 money. You, know, yeah, like, yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. and I make some bread, right? Exactly. <laughs> Especially with these ad reads. Yep. Hey, Matt. Yes. Did you know that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? Cue the funny comments um, about my hairline. Assholes. But did you know that? Uh, no, I did not actually. Do you want to know the good news? What, what's the good news? With today's advance, <laughs> advancements in science, Keeps offers proven treatments that can combat the symptoms of hair loss and help you keep the hair you have. <gasps> At half the cost of your of your local pharmacy. Ryan, are you telling me that I can keep this beautiful head of hair I have if I use Keeps? That is correct. You don't have to go broke to avoid going bald, Matt. Y yeah! Keeps offers generic versions of, on, of the only two FDA-approved hair loss products out there. Some of you, some of you may have tried them before, <laughs> but probably never for- Some of you may have tried them before, but probably never for this price. Plus, Keeps now offers a prescription shampoo to keep your scalp healthy, too. And boy, I could use that. Prevention is key. Keeps treatments really work. They're up to 90% effective at reducing and stopping further hair loss. The sooner you start using Keeps, the more hair you'll save. Many men even experience hair regrowth with Keeps treatments. Keeps has revolutionized the way men are treated for hair loss. Thanks to Keeps, you no longer have to go to the doctor's office for your hair loss prescription. Now you can visit a doctor online and get your hair loss medication delivered to your home. No more waiting rooms and no more pharmacy checkout lines. Get doctor attention and discreet drug delivery, all from the comfort of the privacy of your own home. Find out why Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors and nearly 100,000 men trust it for their hair loss prevention medication. Keeps treatments start at just 10 bucks a month. Plus, for a limited time, you can get your first month free. That's one H of a deal for getting to keep your hair. If, if you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to Keeps.com slash SuperMega to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's right. Go to Keeps.com slash SuperMega, K-E-E-P-S dot com slash SuperMega to get your first month of treatment for free. I won't be alone in the darkness. I won't be alone in the darkness. Uh. Hey, uh, an artist you like that I've never listened to, I heard a song the other night that I was like, oh, this is so good, and I shazammed it, and it was her. Mitski? Why are you giving me that dead-eyed look, Because I wasn't singing Mitski. No, 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 I was just bringing that up. Oh, you went, it's her. And I was like, oh, it's yeah, her. No, no, it's it's uh, Mitski. Yeah, Mitski's wonderful. the first Mitski song I've ever heard. It's really good. It was like, nobody, 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 nobody. It's really good. Nobody, I was like, this song nobody. fucking slaps. I was at a party, a birthday party, and I, I heard her You should playing. listen to more of her shit. It's really good. We played, She's not uh, doing music right now. So she not? She's taking stand up a, Well, she's taking a big break. Oh. I uh, I did uh she actually did a show in Orlando at the same venue like the night Mitsuki. before we did one, yeah. Damn. I uh, I I went that. to go see one of her last shows in LA. Really? Yeah, it was super awesome. With Brent? No. That's you got, Aurora. You got any concerts with Brent coming up? No, Aurora's not going to the Wiggles. Aurora I think is also kind of like going to spend some time home for a bit, I think. That's good. After she's been busy. So much she's and... like released two albums last year. Damn, two albums in one year. Yeah, like Damn. maybe two or three. I think two. I just want to keep it at two and just be safe with that. But there's a lot of record deals. will be like, you gotta do four albums in two years, and it's like, woo, that's, that's pressure. a lot of work. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of pressure too, because it's like, what if you're like on a on a pressure to release uh, an album, um, and you have to just make bullshit, and and you're not feeling it though, because it's like, I think a lot of musicians probably, you know, they make the best music when they. When it's a passion project. Yeah, and, and when it's also when, like, they feel it, but if you're on a deadline, it's kind of like uh, um, an assignment for school. It's like, oh, man, I'm not really going to put any passion in this. I just have to hit a deadline. Yeah. But then if you wanted to actually learn about that subject outside of school because you were interested in it, you would actually, like, retain the information and learn it a lot more. Uh, is, that a, is that a good analogy? Does that make sense? I mean, I, I, I think it's a good analogy. You got it. Because, like, I, ouch. What's wrong? One of my nerves pinched me. Oh, uh, um, but guess what, Matt? What? Chicken butt. Oh, come on, man. Guess what I saw recently, Matt? Uh, your penis for the first time in 10 years? Yeah, because I'm, <laughs> I'm so fucking fat that I can't see my penis that, wait, past wait, wait, my it stomach. It was not a joke about your weight. Was it, was it a, si was it a joke about the size of my Some penis? Of the size of your penis. Well, why are you joking about the size of my penis? It was just, it was. That a, sounds like something someone with a big penis would do. No, it was a joke in poor taste. Or someone with a small penis that's just insecure would do. Ever or a about bully that? that has a big penis. That flaunts his big penis in in front of all the small simpletons around him. I don't do that. 
Okay, sure. I don't have a big penis, and I don't flaunt it in front of all the simpletons. Okay. There are facts there. There are facts. Yeah? Settled. Settled. We're done. I didn't want to have to take you to court over that one. But I saw a movie with Ross. <gasps> um, went over to his place. Uh, Rostifer O'Donovan? Yeah. And uh, we smoked up a little bit, and I'm glad we smoked up because we watched a movie called Paprika. Um, I, I still can't remember the director's name. This is the first movie I've seen of his. Satoshi Ko? Something, maybe? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah, he did Perfect Blue. Perfect Blue. I have not seen Paprika, but I've seen Perfect Blue, and it's fucking amazing. Paprika is a fucking trip. Real quick, before you get into it, w would you like to share, because you, you mentioned smoking up with Ross. Mm hmm Would you like to mention why that was so special? Oh, it was special because uh, I'm not going to say through who or how, but somehow Ross managed to get a joint that was given to someone who gave it to him. But the person who originally started off with this joint. Who rolled it themselves. Snoop Dogg. And it was their own home stuff. Yeah, I so, think. So, yeah, that's what Ross said. So, All I know is it's a you joint. You smoked Snoop Dogg's, uh, one of Snoop Dogg's actual joints. Yeah. and it not, was, not like his brand, like his actual. And it was heavy. I have to say. Oh, I it could was, imagine It was so. pretty heavy. I we didn't smoke at all. So. We smoked like a third of it. Just, you know. Wow. That, I mean, that would that would probably destroy me. Yeah. I, I have a very low tolerance for marijuana. When I when I smoke it, it it can just completely put me on my butt, on, yeah. on my on my little booty. You know what I'm saying? Uh yeah. But tell me about paprika more. Um, I don't I, I don't want to like spoil too much, but essentially it 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 is. Think about, you know, if you could go into someone's dreams. And then kind of influence their I've thoughts. I've seen Inception, Ryan. Yeah, I know. Well, weird, weird. Oddly enough, there's a lot of imagery from this movie that I was like, "Oh shit!" That that seems like it's from Inception. Like, there's a clear. Uh, I don't know if like Christopher Nolan can call it an homage because I feel like even though Paprika is well known, I don't feel like it's well known amongst the American audience. So I don't know if he can get away with calling it an homage if if nobody. If if more than not don't know like this this thing. There's a lot of articles. I just searched Paprika Inception and there's like the synergy of Inception and Paprika. Satoshi Kone, that's his name. Satoshi Kone, okay. Uh but uh there's this one scene where like the dream breaks in like this kind of like shatters like a glass type thing in the same way that it does in Inception. It was odd. There's a whole section on uh the Wikipedia page, like a massive section just titled Inception, and it's just about how critics have drawn the similarities and stuff. So, Interesting. Definitely. I, well, yeah. It's also about going into someone's dreams. I didn't. I didn't see anyone uh, knocking uh, SpongeBob around when they That's did the true. episode where he was going into people's dreams. I SpongeBob I, did it before Inception and Paprika. Paprika's two thousand six. I feel like that's an old ass. Was SpongeBob Paprika two thousand six? Yeah, I just looked it up. Okay, Inception was twenty ten. Which what, what did you think about Inception? Let's talk about Inception, one of the greatest movies of our time. I've only seen it once in theaters, Same. so I, I don't feel like I, I can I have a fresh enough mind. But I remember at the time I enjoyed it. I was confused but as like, hell. But like looking back, I I don't know. Like after uh watching Paprika, I think I prefer the movies when they deal with like dream stuff. Like Christopher Nolan made it cool and and people in suits and we're going to these cool locations. Um and the world works in weird ways. It bends up. Oh, no. But Paprika was more just kind of like this lucid fucking, like, nightmare. Well, that's, I mean, I've, I've talked about my dreams extensively. Because, like, my dreams are just weird as fuck. And when I see in a movie, someone goes to a dream, it's always just super realistic. And it's like, I think to really convey a dream, it just has to be uncanny and, like, not make sense. I think, I think you should watch Paprika. It's really good. And it makes me want to watch more of his films. Well, uh, I think I'm going to start with Perfect Blue. Perfect Blue. I'll watch that with you. I want to see it again. Okay. It's so fucking good. I love it. It's terrifying. It's really good, though. It's a thriller, right? Yeah, it's a thriller. I, uh, speaking of, of big directors, we're talking about, uh, Nolan Peterson. Talking about Michael Moore? Uh, yeah, Michael Moore has a new uh, movie. Peter Jackson? Uh, Guillermo del Toro. Keep going. Oh, oh, you mean famous directors. Keep going. <laughs> keep going. No, for real. Keep going. Let's see if you guess it. Alfred Hitchcock. No. No, I'm talking like directors of the now. No, did you get famous. what I was doing? Big directors. Oh, okay. Oh my God, man. I see you. I. Okay, uh, James Cameron. Okay, um, you're going through his shit? No, I'm, I'm just looking at uh, 
December 17th, 2021. What about James Cameron? What are you talking about? December 17th, 2021 will be a very special day. That's when Avatar 2 Avatar 2. Comes 2. I can't wait. <laughs> I'm not interested, It's the dude. most... It, I'm it not really is crazy how it's, it's, the, what, it's, the, it's the highest grossing... What it, what, what, what's the stats on Avatar? It's like the highest grossing it was movie of all time. It was the highest grossing movie of all time. I thought something beat it recently. Didn't, didn't Marvel beat it? Or something? Oh, Infinity. Endgame? Endgame, yeah. Um, but like, how, how was that the highest grossing movie that no one... It, like, it's not a pop culture... Everyone went to go see it, though. That's when 3D was kind of... Was it because of the 3D thing? That was when Real D started, right? Yes. With the with the, the goofy glasses that in the black glasses in eighth of the grade I'd punch blue. the lenses out and wear them and be like, Oh, I'm a hipster. I look cool. <laughs> I'm hot. I still do that sometimes. I'll put on my real D glasses and, and just go out in public. Still have I, a pair? No, I don't. Okay. But uh I mean Real D, the first time I saw it blew me away. I, the first movie I ever saw in Real D, I think was uh Monsters vs. Aliens. Do you remember Here, that? Yeah. I remember one of I think one of the first no, I, can't, I honestly can't remember. I remember the first movie to be blown away by Real D, uh three D was in um, Toy Story 3, just yes. because I like, I, I think animation works way better with those glasses because there's that, it makes the depth, it, it's just beautiful, like yeah. the colors and everything and the depth perception is there. But like when it's live action movies, it just makes everything seem more campy and fake. Well, animation's already fake, so I think you're able to easily like trick your brain because because you're more like kind of a encapsulated yeah, this is like a fun little atmosphere. real yeah. life storybook. But but then if it's, if it's uh, real life, there's something in your brain that's like, that's not real. Yeah. But like, you, you, I see real life through 40 every day. You were questioning uh, why Avatar made so much money. Well, it, 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 well it, it's not even why it made so much money. It's like <clears throat> for a movie to be that big and just not leave a mark on like pop culture at J all. James Cameron just manages to pull shit off where you just don't understand it. Like Titanic was not like... I don't think was uh, Mark to do as well as it was. I think I, th I think the studios were trying to kill it in marketing and stuff. Well, I mean, like Titanic's a huge. Cultural Maybe I'm wrong on that. Movie. I could be wrong, but um, that's funny how some of those things work. Like, uh, don't kiss the microphone. Kiss me on the lips instead. Come on, give me. Okay. Um, basically, things that it, it's funny when there's things that are like huge flops, but end up becoming a massive pop culture icon. The later, cult like, following, like, like, like Reservoir Dogs, I think was one of, the, or Pulp Fiction. Mm -hmm. Evil one, Dead was one. I think was was it Pulp Fiction? Pulp that, Fiction was a what was yeah. a big flop, but mm -hmm. ended up being just one of those movies that everyone loves. Same with uh, uh I heard Dead. that the song "Hey Ya" by <clears throat> Outkast hey, yeah, yeah. was so ill received when it came out. The radio, a lot of radio stations wouldn't even play it. It was like so hated, and now it's like you hear that song, and like no matter who you are, you can tap your foot to that. And you're like, fuck yeah, it's, it's a, a good sad song. song. Every time I, every time you're at a bar, you're anywhere at a restaurant, you hear that song, you're just like, oh yeah, nice. Johnny Cash needs to do a version. Like, hey, hey, uh, I think it's time uh, past time hey, past for that. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no way. Johnny Cash can still do a cover if he wants to. You're fucking with me. <laughs> Don't gaslight me. What are you talking about? I see you got the thing in your eyelids. What thing in my eyelids? When you're lying to me. <laughs> the thing in my eyelids. I can see it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, first thing I, was, I thought I was going to have to break you that Johnny Cash is dead. What? <laughs> I love your screens, man. Thanks, man. You know, I get I, very primal with them. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like I'm I'm known for my scream, but I think in terms of comedic value, it pales in comparison to your scream. See, people say mine is just more scary. Yours is is just so because when you react to a situation, uh, like just now with a scream like that, I think what's so funny for me it's like oh funny high pitched noise, <laughs> but for you it's like. The like the, the the imagery of of somebody reacting to a situation with such guttural primal, <laughs> like I I. <laughs> there's been oh, so I many it. times you've done that, like just in real life. You you've said like that's probably the easiest way to make me laugh is when you freak out like that or if fart. You, yeah, you're dude. If I fart, that. it just it, it sends you for a whirl. It is a direct line to my funny bone because <laughs> you just have the best Hollywood esque farts I've ever heard in my life. You you weren't uh, able to hear them. That morning in the hotel room because you were fast asleep. You should have woken me up, man. But I remember. No, no, no. I did. I did. I, I heard it from okay. my room. The, okay. That one specific one. And then I heard it. The one that Harrison was like, it. "That's gonna sting." Yeah, yeah. But they don't. Because what I heard was I heard a big. <laughs> and then I hear like laughter and like, "Oh my god, <laughs> dude! Oh my god!" Yeah, I was. Uh, Is that Harrison? That's. Yeah, like, oh my god! <laughs> I I was 
scared because the first night in Vegas, yeah. remember how I went home? I went back to the hotel early uh, and I fell asleep. Uh -huh. And you and I were supposed to share a bed um because we it, it was harrison jackson sharing a bed you and me share a bed and then carson but jackson was, rolled out there there was a there's a couch that it was a futon and he rolled it out for me by the time i got back to the hotel room because i went out for a smoke it was laid out see so i was, see i don't know i didn't even know there, there was one there so i wake up in the middle of the night and like oh everyone's back but i was like wait ryan's not in bed with me and i was like That's, maybe he's outside or in the bathroom and i wake up like three hours later and he's still not there and i was like how do you know oh because i'm not in the bed with yeah you. yeah i was like what the hell so then like in the morning i i wake up and i was like where, where's Ryan? And then Jackson and I were like, oh, he didn't come back last night. <laughs> and I was like, what? And they like fully convinced me like, yeah, we don't know where he is. We haven't heard from him. And I was like starting to freak. I was like, you haven't heard from Ryan? What? Did, he didn't come back? And then I realized you were in the living room on your nice little. Uh, yeah, just sleeping. Nice little pullout couch. Sleeping away where it bent me like a crescent moon. Mm, that's the best. The My best favorite thing about sleep. pullout couches is the the sink. Yeah. There's always some point. Except in this it, one sunk like a candy cane. Yes, like your head was the part that was sinking, down, <laughs> yeah. which is very unsettling. Yeah, I woke up with a crick in my neck. Ooh, Most did you get nights. it out? Yeah, I had to dig it out. I hate the cricks in in necks, like and shoulders. When, when it, like, but when you wake up and you slept on it wrong, you're like the rest of the day it's gonna be like this, and I can't do anything. But it happens so rarely. But that one time, you're like, fuck. You're like, god damn it. And there's like nothing you can do. And it's because it's like, oh, I guess the I was sleeping with too many pillows under my head. Yeah, I don't know. I uh I need a I need a new pillow. I can't get it's like Goldilocks right now. I have a couple pillows. Uh -huh. One of them is too tall where when I sleep on it it's like it's very firm and tall. So like it's it's too high. I want my head to be lower to the bed. Yeah. But I like the firmness of it. And then there's another one that the softness is perfect, but it's it's too it's too like low and my face just sinks down to the bed. And I'm like I yeah, I feel like Goldilocks here. And I have one more pillow, but it's a really shitty one from like Walmart. That was like five bucks and is like three pieces of paper put together. It's so thin. I just use it as a pillow to put underneath my knees sometimes because my back hurts so bad. <laughs> no, because like you the, get a, an old man. I, I got bunions. This, I got I gotta, hemorrhoids. I got to uh, put this pillow under my knees. Well, no, I've been waking up with my back just in the worst pain. My lower back. So I read online like, oh, if you put a pillow under your knees, it can help like align your back. So I did it and it hurt even more. So then I put it, <laughs> so then I put it under my, my lower back and then it also hurt really bad. I don't know, man. You didn't fix it. My bed might just be too small for me. Yeah. I mean, I'm still I'm I'm in a twin right now. Okay, bitch. I'm just kidding. I'm not in a twin. I'm in a full. But it's like I'm too long for it. Even if 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 my if I'm sleeping just regularly, my feet are always off the end of the bed. I wish I get like an extra long full. That would be the best. Because like if you go up like from a full to a queen or a king, does the length of the bed actually get longer or just the width? I think the length also gets longer Ooh. by a little bit. Because a California king, like, is different. That's true. Than California a, king than is massive. Twin, right? uh, I, I would. I remember when we lived with uh, Mark, he had a California king mattress that he didn't need anymore. And I needed a mattress. So he's like, oh, I'll give you this California it took king. Took up way too much space in your room. And I had a pretty I remember small you're room. like, I, I, I need to rethink this. Well, I was like, you I put was, it in your room? Yeah, because I was like, oh, I'm not going to turn down a free mattress. The, the funny thing was, you couldn't like give it back to him because that was because that was his way of making room. And after you said yes, he was like, yep, nope, not taking it back. And then uh, the Ikea guys were at the house that day putting together some furniture and I had a bed frame and they put together like the bed frame for that and put the mattress on and, and I hadn't seen it yet. And they're like, what do you think? After Wait, was, was that done? the time like Mark pushed one of the movers? Oh, yeah. And he smashed his, his skull on the pavement. Was, yeah. That was crazy. Um, but the, the, the thing was, I saw that in my room and I was like, I can't have this in my room. It took up like no joke, 80 to 85 percent of the room. Oh, I remember. And it was tall too. Like I remember my, the you room just was one big bed. <laughs> just, and you looked at me and I was like, dude, how do I <laughs> how do I undo this? It was I mean, it was a it was a great mattress. I slept on it a couple nights, but eventually I, I think we had to call somebody to come move it out. And I've always gone it. with Queen. Queen? So, yeah. I should get a queen. I should get myself a queen for sure. Any queens out there? <laughs> right? Um, no, I, I should get a queen. I don't want a king. King's too big. And I just don't need all that space. Uh, but I like rolling around sometimes, or like I sprawl out when I sleep. Out. I really sprawl out. So like, queen's perfect for sprawling your shits out, you know. Because I I don't want my bed to take up too much of my room, and even now I don't have a massive room. Proven. My room is pretty average size, uh, and my bed's in the middle of my room, so it's like I don't want to take up too much space, especially because like I have to walk to get to the other side of my room. I have to like walk by it, and if I get a bigger bed, it will make the walkway narrow. 
It will make the space between like my drawers and my bed less narrow. A little area I'm trying to put a little desk to like do. Uh, I'm trying to learn like piano right now, so I have that on a little desk. It'll make that space more cramped. And my drums fit perfectly right now. I rearranged them; they fit perfectly. And if I got a bigger bed, it would throw that off. It sounds like you got to stay with the bed you have. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to sleep terribly. I should start sleeping in like a like a hammock every night. I mean, there are people that do that. They just set up a hammock in their room. When we were at that Airbnb in New York for the New York show, there was a hammock in my room. You like a vampire sleep like standing up, honest or hanging upside down by my feet. I'm sure that would align my Dude, back perfectly. You just have straps that no, that would kill you. No, how can all you? All the have... blood would rush to your head and it'd kill you. How does Dracula do it, Ryan? Because he's not human. Yes, he is. No, he's not. He's a vampire, which is different. Do you okay. think a werewolf and 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 Jackson Tucker over there are the same type of thing? Yeah, they look like. <laughs> it. How, how how does like uh, I wish the blood wouldn't rush to my head because sleeping upside down. How can my posture be bad? It's just stretching me, and I'd probably get a foot taller too, stretching me out. You know, like gravity to the word. Sorry, I had to yawn. Yeah, you you better apologize for that. Very you fucking ass. <laughs> I just had to yawn like very obnoxiously and over exaggerated. Luckily, I didn't make a uh, didn't make a peep. Is it because what I'm talking about is related to sleep, or because it's just that fucking boring? I'll take that as that fucking <laughs> What else happened in Vegas? Uh, okay, Jackson. Jackson's ass. On the way to... Okay, so let's start earlier. We, we leave for Vegas. Uh, we stopped at the Hoover Dam before we got to Vegas. Well, before that, we stopped at a Del Taco. Which is supposed to be the first Del Taco in Barstow, California. Yes. And it was really good. They have like a very special item on the menu that other Del Tacos don't have. It's like the Barstow Classic. It was good. It had like beans and peppers and, and curds. shredded pork. Some yeah. beans and curds and, uh, and whey. Yeah, a lot of whey protein. And then we ended up uh, we ended up at the Hoover Dam, which I'd never seen before. And all I all I had to say was, "Damn." Yep. It was really cool. It was it was uh, it could have gone on uh, Reddit r slash megalophobia if you ask me. It probably is. I guarantee it is. It, it it's what's crazy is you can just look straight over the edge of it. Like there's not really like much protection like or guardrails or anything there's, a, there's like a rail about waist high yeah and you can just lean over and just look straight down the hoover dam um you tell I, me how you watched a video at one time when you were young of some i did guy young rolling, i saw a guy rolling down the hoover dam it did not look fun for him i don't think he survived um I, I could easily drop in with a skateboard though if you gave me if you gave me a deck and some wheels i could easily drop in and carve that baby up i've never seen that video are you gonna watch it now you're gonna watch the video of a man dying live on the podcast <laughs> Well, it's pretty crazy when you put it like that. Um, yeah, the Hoover Dam was incredible. It was beautiful. This has to be it. Felt really good outside. And then we went to Vegas, had a great effing time. And I said in the car, if anyone's going to win money, it's going to be Jackson because he has that kind of luck. And of course, he won $850 from slot machines without barely spending a single dollar. He just puts money in, boom, wins, put money in, boom. And then I lost more money tonight. Did you watch? Is that the video? Did you see it? Yeah, but when you talk, talked about it, you said he splatted. This guy didn't really splat. He doesn't just... he, at the end, doesn't he hit and No. Well, I'm sure it's happened multiple times. Wait, I'm just real quick. I'm going to Google like man. Like how many I mean, people... there is blood. Like he did die. How many people fall off the Hoover Dam a year? There's no way to accidentally fall off the Hoover Dam, though. I, I could find a way. You think so? <laughs> the official number of fatalities involving in the. Oh, it's the building of the Hoover Dam. 96 people. Uh, classified as industrial fatalities from drowning, blasting, falling rocks, or slides, falls from the canyon walls, being struck by heavy equipment, truck accidents. How many tourists have died at the Hoover Dam? Um, oh my, oh, sorry. 38,364, but that's just total suicides in 2010 in the United States. I thought that was just for the Hoover Dam. Um, that was, that was, for a second, I was like, that's a lot of people. Um, real quick, uh, I just want to see I want to see the statistic on the Hoover Dam. Wait for it. Wait for it. Almost. Almost. This is what we're going to end the podcast with, Matt. Really? Yeah. We got to know the statistic. That's the final thing that we're going to end the podcast on. From 1962 to 2010, a bureau representative is quoted as saying the dam has seen 35 deaths. Uh, there have been 30 deaths by suicide since the dam was completed. That's not a... Niagara Falls has 20 a year. That's a shitty way to go. 
but it's on a monument, so. There was some weird alien shit there. Niagara Falls? No, 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 at, uh, at Hoover Dam. Oh, you mean like the whole... The statues and the things like the star alignments and, and the guy was like, we wanted extraterrestrials to see it. It's a really cool piece of architecture and I can't imagine how someone could build that in the 30s or 20s whenever they built it. Well, same thing with pyramids, right? Yeah. The Sphinx. And when you get up close to a pyramid, like if you look at a picture and you see block by block. Palaces. Palaces. Like I was the ones with the round shit, you know, you're like... Oh, Taj Mahal? It's yeah. just crazy that people can do that without like modern technology. Dedication. Well, they didn't. They used they used it doing future technology from, from aliens, aliens who then took it back and like nope. Do you ever before we end the podcast? Do you think there's any credence to any of those theories? I think it is. I think it's interesting possible. to think about, but I don't. I don't. I don't think it's tr true. So you're telling me when you watch Ancient Aliens, you don't believe it? I've never seen it all the way through. You've never seen Ancient. I've only aliens? seen the meme. So you haven't seen the show? No. Oh man, <laughs> I feel like we should have a night where we watch some Ancient Aliens. Okay. It gets ridiculous in the later seasons because they're grasping at the stupidest shit. I remember one where it's like they 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 folded a painting or like they mirrored a painting in half and like it was a guy's face cut in half. So when it mirrored, it kind of looked like an alien. And they zoom in, and it was like, Burr! <laughs> like it is. A, the, like, is this what is this what uh, our overlords look like? Yeah, I think it is. What the about what about what anything. about Stonehenge? Can you explain Stonehenge? No, I don't think anyone can explain Stonehenge. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>